our lives on earth are extremely short, so very short compared to eternity. That person who is born on the earth works so hard at all the physical things of the earth, yet spiritually is so poor and wretched. Spiritually, he has not believed in Jesus. He has not had his sins washed away. That person is living in sin and then the day that that person dies, all your success, everything, all your achievements, they will just cease to exist. You go now into eternity with nothing. You now go into eternity poor and wretched and condemned because you did not believe in Jesus Christ. So that kind of life, that kind of life of living for this earth completely makes no sense. If there is something that we really need to be on our knees, asking the Lord to really place on our hearts, it's the reality of eternity. We really need to ask Jesus Christ to place this truth on our hearts so that we never forget just how real eternity is. So that we never forget that after this life, there is eternity. That the, after this life is not the end of life. After this life is not the end of life. When somebody dies, everybody says, rest in peace, rest in peace. Now they've gone to a better place. They are better off. It's better. You know, they were too sick. Now they've gone to a better place. Yet that is not guaranteed. For the Bible says that it is appointed for man to die once. They are after the judgment. So it is not guaranteed that when, when somebody dies and we all say rest in peace, rest in peace, it's not guaranteed. We can say to people, that rest in peace, but we cannot change the reality of where they really are. And that is the thing that we must be more concerned about. We must not just be concerned about looking good to people so that when we die, everybody is just going to say, oh, they are in the kingdom of heaven, you know. What we really need to be concerned about, the question that is, that is supposed to be really boiling in our hearts, is that where are we going to spend our eternity? Is it heaven or hell? Because eternity is real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. And salvation is on this earth. Everything that we can have on this earth, no matter how comfortable a life we may have on this earth, all the joys of the earth, anything we can have on the earth, the joy, the success, everything. If we, don't, if we do not have eternal life, then it's all worthless and it's all useless because in just an instant like that, we'll lose everything. Like the man who built his house on the sand. It will all be gone. I shared with you when I shared the testimony of hell that people in hell feel like Earthly life was just a dream. Hell is not a place that was created for a human being. But it is the place that those people who reject the living God, it is the place where they go. It is a place of separation from the Lord. And it is a terrible place that you and I need to do whatever it takes in order to escape hell. We need to hold on to the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to humble ourselves at the feet of Jesus Christ and to follow him in holiness and righteousness in order for us to escape hell. It really is a waste of time to become the most famous person on the earth, yet you lose your eternal soul. You go to hell because once you are in hell, your fame, your, your earthly fame, it will all be, it will all become so useless to you. People in hell wish they could come back to the earth. They wish they could come back. They, they don't care about things like fame. They don't care about things like money. They don't care about things like having this beautiful thing or that beautiful thing. 
once you are in hell, the only thing that matters to you is, I just need to make sure I have eternal life. But on earth, we have so many distractions such that eternal life takes the back seat. But then our lives are suddenly cut short. The Bible says that the life of man is like a flower. You know, in the morning, it's so fresh. It looks so beautiful, but suddenly it withers. It quickly fades away. That is how earthly life is. It's fleeting. That, that's why even the Bible says, don't love the world or the things of the world. You know, because it's all quickly, very quickly passing away. All of us are drawing closer and closer to that day when we're going to stand before the throne of God. Today, we are much closer to the day that we're going to stand before the throne of God than we were yesterday, than we were a year ago. We are drawing closer and closer to the day that we're going to live this earthly life. But are we prepared? What if your life was taken away from you today? What if my life was taken away from me today? What would be my portion? Is it heaven or hell? Are we still living in sin and saying, I cannot leave my addiction because I'm too addicted to this thing? Yet God is going to require an account from you for that very thing which you are saying is impossible for you to leave because you are too addicted. His power is sufficient for you to set you free. Jesus Christ came to set the captives free. So if you are truly serious about getting rid of your sin, then Jesus is able to help you. But you are the one who has to let it go. Then trust in the power of Jesus Christ to keep you from falling back into your addiction by humbling yourself in the presence of the Lord, by going in prayer, by staying in prayer until that craving for your addiction is broken you let it go then you go and pray until it is broken if it means prayer and fasting you have to go and do prayer and fasting until that addiction is completely broken because if you do not let it go one day you are going to be in hell begging for mercy begging for one second saying lord I want to go back to earth for one second. I promise when I go back to earth, it won't matter to me that I, I called it an addiction. I'm ready to let it go now, but it will be too late. You keep begging for mercy and years will just keep going by. Because the time that Jesus Christ has given us to let go of our addictions, to let go of our sins, it's right now. The Bible says that when you hear the voice of the Lord, don't harden your heart. Do not harden your heart. Today is the day of repentance. We are never promised tomorrow. The day to ensure that we're going to get into the kingdom of heaven is today. And salvation is by repenting of your sins, which is to stop doing those sinful things that you know you're doing. Stop doing them. Ask Jesus to forgive you. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Believe in his sacrifice for you on the cross for the remission of your sins. But you don't continue in your sins. The Bible says if we deliberately continue in our sins, then there's no more sacrifice. There's no more sacrifice for us. But the only thing that we can expect is God's judgment. So if you truly want to be saved, let go of your sins, believe in Jesus Christ and ask him to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Then start to live for the glory of the Lord. Everything that you're doing, the things you say, the things you do, everything about your life, things you watch, things you listen to, th things you speak, things you wear, everything. You need to ask yourself this question. Is this giving glory to Jesus or not? and you're going to know what is pleasing to God.
and the Holy Spirit is going to lead you into all truth. But if we are going to live for this temporal world, then our lives are truly wasted because you're going to work so hard. You're going to work so hard and reach the peak of your career and reach the peak of all your, your hobbies, whatever you pursue, whatever takes up you know, all your passion, wherever you put in all your passion, you're going to reach the very peak of it. And suddenly your life is snatched away and spiritually you are poor and wretched because you said, I cannot pursue the Lord, I'm too busy. I cannot pursue the Lord, I'm, it, I'm going to stand out too much, it's so hard. I'm going to pursue the Lord when I grow old. That's what so many people say. They say, I'm going to start living for Jesus Christ when I'm old. Right now, I'm so young, you know. If I start to pursue Jesus Christ, it's going to make me to stand out among people and among my friends. You know, you are so concerned about the expectations of your society. And let me tell you something. Uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ took me to hell, if you have never watched my testimony, you can watch my testimony of hell. But... One thing I remember very clearly, this time around when Jesus Christ took me to go and show me the reality of hell, one thing I remember very clearly is the feeling of overwhelming, you know that overwhelming feeling of foolishness, feeling so foolish. And I, I didn't just know that these people who are in hell felt so foolish for holding on to their sins. But I also felt so foolish. I was like, I had just finished praying with my sister in the night, midnight prayer. And when I went back to bed, I didn't actually like fall asleep. This was so real. Because I remember I laid down on the bed and then I start to hear all these voices of people like screaming. And this wasn't the first time Jesus had, this was after my first testimony of hell. So I started to hear all these voices of these people who are screaming like a lot, like countless, innumerable crowds of people. And I remember the sound seems to be coming from, you know, as if I thought like it was coming from outside my house. So I was lying down in bed and I was very conscious of my surroundings. Okay, I could see that I'm in, in the bedroom and I could hear all these crowds, innumerable crowds of people screaming and, and you know, they, they sounded like it's from a distance, like from a distance. So I start to think to myself, like, maybe there's a soccer match, you know, like, uh, the first thing that I thought is, where's that noise coming from, you know? Because I wasn't expecting that Jesus Christ was going to, to go and show me hell. I just started to think that, where's that? Maybe there's a soccer match, you know? Somehow, I had forgotten that this was midnight. Having a soccer match at this time was impossible. So I thought maybe there's, there's a soccer match because people in my country really love soccer. And where, whenever there's soccer, there's going to be so much noise, you know, like people cheering and all that. But then when I, when I just thought like, oh, is that a soccer match, you know? And suddenly I am like out of my body and I'm descending into this huge, huge, huge endless pit. Okay, it just seemed like I'm descending, like going down, you know, going down to a very deep place in the earth. Like I'm just falling, you know, like overturning like that. I was fully conscious I was me. I, like I was even still wearing my dress. And I was like just turning over and over and falling at a great speed. And immediately that's when I realized that the, the sounds are actually coming from below me. Because the more that I'm falling, the clearer that the sounds get. And these are people who are screaming and I start to realize that actually they are, they are screams of agony. Like they are screams of agony. People are actually screaming out in pain. Then I realize that these are people who are in hell. 
whom I was hearing screaming. And because I knew that, you know, that, that hell was supposed to be my portion, I knew at that very moment, you know, I'm going to link uh, the full testimony there, but I just want to, to share with you about that feeling that you get uh, when you waste your life, you know. So when I start to descend into hell, and then I know that my life is over, that, you know, like this is now my destination. The overwhelming feeling of feeling extremely foolish. That's what I had. I knew that everybody in this place felt so foolish for not obeying Jesus. I knew that they all felt so foolish. And I also felt foolish, one, for not obeying the Lord Jesus, because uh, like this was something, you know, I can't really start explaining in detail. I'm going to link the testimony in the description box. But why I felt foolish was because the Lord Jesus Christ had warned me about my sins, but I had held on to my sins and ignored the Lord's persistent warning. So because, you know, I just held on to my sin. I loved my sin more than the Lord. But now I felt extremely foolish. I just felt like obeying Jesus is so easy. I should have just obeyed the Lord. And secondly, another thing that I remember feeling extremely foolish about was about just life's priorities. It, it's more like parts of your life, you know, it's more like you relieve parts of your life. I remember like overhearing myself, like having some conversations with some people back on the earth. Okay, I, I remember like me, uh, like like uh, those moments, like uh, it's more like I could overhear the conversation, like I'm still falling into hell, but it's more like parts of my life, you know, more like they're being replayed, but I could actually just overhear them. And, the, you know, I remember like one part that was very significant to me was like this, like this time that was being replayed, like I was complaining about what somebody did to me. But now that I was, but now that I was actually like now dead, you know, like going down into the, into hell, like that's what I thought. I thought I was dead and I knew like, oh, now I'm going to go to hell. You know, it just felt like all those things that I was busy complaining about, like, oh, look at the, this person is doing this to me. You know, I felt like there were things that I could have easily overlooked. I felt like there were things that were not even a priority enough for me to go and complain to somebody like, oh, look, this, this, I don't like what this person is doing. You know, yes, on earth, they seemed too significant, so important, but I felt like, you know, like I wasted my life, like things like that. I, I, I could have easily ignored some things and just, you know, I could have easily just ignored some things and just been good to this person still. And I felt like, a lot of a lot of my life was just wasted like i felt like a lot of my conversations were wasted time a lot of my words were wasted why because they had no significance they had no significance in eternity and i felt extremely foolish my words were wasted things that i applied my energy and passion in like I felt like there were a waste like you know I was feeling like a lot of things in in life I should have easily been focusing only on what is important only what is important things that are of eternal value so I felt like my priorities while I was on earth like they were all wrong I should have focused more on living my life for God not just focusing about this earthly life and I felt like, oh, I could have been more understanding of this person instead of like just picking all the all these things and, you know, like wasting my words, wasting my time, complaining about what this person has done to me. I could have just been talking about Jesus. I could have been sharing the gospel. I could have been living for God. I could have been using my words for God. Now God seems so much important to me. God seemed so much more 
important and I can tell you that hell is a real place. And I can tell you that God is truly serious about sin. We have to let go of our sin. All the sin that we are aware of in our lives, we have to let it go. And then we need to humble ourselves in prayer and ask Jesus to give us the strength to overcome our sin and ask him to fill us with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to keep uh, purifying us. He's going, he, he says the branch that bears fruit, he's going to prune so that it bears more fruit. So when you begin to obey Jesus Christ, he will begin to reveal to you more things that you need to get rid of so that your fruit is going to give glory to God. Because we have been called to be fruitful so don't waste your life. We are only here for a very, very short time. When my elder brother died, you know, and I thought to myself that if he had known that he only had 38 years to live on the earth, he would have really focused more on what is important. But he thought that he had a whole life ahead of him. He thought that he was going to live until old age. Many of us think we're going to live until old age. If, you, if we only knew that we only have two months to be alive, if we only knew that we're remaining with 10 days to be alive, if we only knew that we're remaining with a year to be alive, we would prioritize eternity. But the thing is, none of us knows when God is going to call us from the earth. So we need, we need to live for what is important and to have our wedding garment on at all times so that when God calls us, we are going to be found living in obedience to Jesus Christ, having been washed by his precious blood so that we may inherit the kingdom of heaven. We're not going to be found still holding on to our sin and have to go to hell. Hell is a real place where people beg for mercy, for a second to come back to the earth, yet it's never granted. They beg for water, you get hungry, you get thirsty, you get so tired, you feel exhausted, yet there's no rest, day or night. All you know is torment and torment and torment and torment, unbearable torment. And according to what the Lord showed me, you know, the, one of the worst things that I really, really hate about hell is the fear that is in hell. That's something that, that was so real that I really, really understood that the people who are in hell experience is the extreme fear. You have no peace, but instead you are filled with fear. And at the same time, like there are all these demonic creatures, very ugly, very fearful looking, you know, and you do not have power over them. But they have power over you in that place but you do not have power over them the way you do here on the earth. Here on the earth, if a demon comes to you, you have authority, you can rebuke it in Jesus' name and it's going to flee. But if you go to hell, you know, you are surrounded by all these ugly demons. That's one thing that I, that's one thing that I really, really don't like about hell. One thing that really, really scared me about hell. One, one reason why I just said, Lord, help me. Help me to escape that place. Because the Lord showed me these demons that were in hell, really scary monsters. And they would just lift up the people, you know, like they were just lifting up the people and they have this hatred for humans, okay? Like they would just lift up the people like from this section, go and dump them in another section. And they were so heartless, like the way that they torment people. It's a place of hopelessness. It's a place of constant suffocation, like every time you can't breathe. Extreme torment where your flesh is being burnt. 
and life on earth begins to seem like a paradise. That is why people in here just wish like, I don't want my family to come here. I don't want my friends to come here. I wish they can repent. But the time Jesus Christ has given us to repent is now. Don't go to hell. If you go to hell, there's no escape. Yes, you're going to be remembering these words. Yes, you're going to be remembering all the chances God gave you to repent. But it will be too late. So are you going to live your life only for earthly success? Or are you going to prioritize eternity? We need to ask the Lord. We need to ask him to put eternity on our hearts. We need to ask Jesus to put eternity on our hearts to help us to live for him so that we may bear good fruit, so that we may be like the man who planted his house on the rock, not wasting our lives, being born on the earth, making an earthly name, earthly wealth, earthly success, earthly fame, then dying and perishing in hell. People who are in hell, I'm telling you, if, if they were to be given a second chance to come back to the earth, they would, they would actually say, I don't even want to be famous. I don't want to be famous. I don't want to be rich. I don't want to be this and that. All I want is salvation. Do not be careless. Take care of your salvation. Don't be careless and trample on it by going back to the vomit that Jesus Christ has already rescued you from. But you must hold on and endure until the end so that you may be saved. You must continue to bear good fruit don't turn back. Jesus says, the man who puts his hand on the plow then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. So turn your eyes upon Jesus Christ. 